when we learned about Social Security, we saw that the people who are currently working are paying their FICA taxes. Those, essentially, those revenues are being used directly to provide the Social Security benefits for existing retirees and other beneficiaries. And any surplus goes to the Social Security Trust. And when you had this baby boomer generation on the left-hand side of this of this system right here. So the baby boomer generation is this huge population boom that happened after World War II, after after you know the country was happy and all the soldiers had come back, they produced a lot of babies, and it was so you had this population boom. And when this population boom was on the left hand side of the system, they were able to generate a lot of revenue to supply for the benefits for essentially their parents' generation. And so that did help build the surplus. The problem is, is that they didn't produce, uh, the, the population did not grow as much in the next generation. And you could view that as a problem or a good thing. But it's a problem in the context of Social Security because starting recently and over the next few decades, this baby, baby boom generation is going to move onto the right-hand side of, of this equation. And we saw that it will, they will start they will start to draw down even this surplus fairly soon and that because of this this demographic change the social security surplus will be completely depleted between 2030 and 2040 medicare is very similar you have some portion of the fica tax is for medicare and that that revenue is used to pay for the health benefits of the retirees any surplus goes into a medicare trust and that medicare trust the formal name is the hospital insurance trust fund the problem with Medicare is that the situation is even worse. The Medicare trust, the Medicare, or I guess we could say the Medicare system is already running at a deficit, meaning that they're spending more money on the right, they're spending more money on the right than they're getting in on the left. So they're already starting to draw down, already starting to draw down their trust. So Social Security, at least the trust is continuing to grow until 2023, or that's our best estimate right now. Then it'll start drawing down, and it'll get depleted in 20, between 2030 to 2040. In Medicare, situation's a lot worse. So in Medicare, we are already starting to draw down the trust. We are already spending more on beneficiaries than we were taking down it than we were taking in FICA revenues. And the entire trust, based on our our current assumptions will probably be depleted in the next 10 years. Depleted, depleted in next 10 years. And what makes Medicare especially troubling, despite the fact that it's in a kind of a worse financial position, is that these costs are growing even faster. And I want to be clear, a lot of people think that the, so for Social Security, the main problem with this system over here is the demographic changes. You have this huge population that's retiring, the baby boomers, which makes this not sustainable. But with Medicare, that's also going on. But what makes Medicare even a, a bigger problem than Social Security is above and beyond those demographic changes, above and beyond these this baby boomer generation retiring, instead of paying into Medicare, taking benefits benefits from Medicare, the big problem is that you actually have medical health care costs going up well above the cost of inflation. For Social Security, these people's benefits could just go up with inflation. For Medicare, the benefits go up with the cost of, of, of medical care. And that's going well above the cost of inflation. And so you have the situation where, based on current benefits and our best assumptions about the economy and the FICA taxes coming in, you kind of have a reality where if you had to give the current benefits and if you expect medical costs, healthcare costs to continue to increase at the rate they're doing, and there's no sign, frankly, that it is stopping, then you have this reality that Medicare, left unchecked, could, at right now, it's roughly about 23% of our budget, 23-24% of our budget, or about 4% of our GDP. So here we are in 2011. It's about 4% of our GDP. We're spending on Medicare and Medicaid. And Medicaid is essentially health benefits for mainly the poor. It's run by the states, but it, it gets federal funding. So right now, that's 4% of GDP. But because of the cost growth in in healthcare costs, and if we leave it completely in, unchecked, over the next 50, 60 years, it could grow to 15, 16, 17% of GDP. And just to be clear, that's the that's the percentage of GDP that are in, that's roughly our entire federal budget. So this has the potential, if we don't grow our budget any, to actually crowd out a lot of other things. And just to understand this graph a little bit, they show they show they show the part of the part in the cost of Medicare, the part of the growth due to different things. This is the effect of aging population. This is the effect of excess cost growth. And then this is the interaction of the two. And to understand why that makes sense, 
you just have to think about the total cost being the product of the number, uh, maybe you could say the net number of recipients, because some people are paying in as well. But this will hopefully help you understand what I'm talking about. Number of recipients, number of recipients times times the cost per recipient. So let's say that this is the cost per recipient. Cost per recipient. Cost per recipient. So if you take the number of recipients times the cost per recipient, you're going to get the total cost. Let's say that's the total cost today. So that's that would be the area of that square. We're just multiplying the base times the height. So current costs. Current annual cost. Current costs. Now, because of demographic changes, you're going to have some increase in the net number of recipients. So you're going to have some increase there. But because of medical cost growth, you're going to have a big increase in the cost per recipient. So this thing is going to increase much more. And so if you go to some future point, and you can pick your future point, but I'm really just trying to make you understand why we have these three categories, the total cost is going to be that total cost per recipient that has grown dramatically times the total number of recipients. And so now you're talking about this area. This area is going to be the total cost. And if you think about how much of this total cost is due purely to the increased cost growth, well, it would be this part right over here. This part would be the amount, the cost, the increase in the area true true purely due to the increased cost growth. So that would be this part of the graph right over here. What part of this increased area is due purely to the increased number of recipients? Well, that would be this part of the graph right over here. Purely due to the increased number of recipients. And that is right over here, effect of aging population. And then you have some part of this area that's created by both the increase in the number of recipients and the increase in costs. And that's going to be. That's going to be this area right over here, which is this part of the graph. So when people talk about the unsustainable, well, one, we have an unsustainable debt to begin with. The second thing is, is that the liabilities, the obligations that we have, aren't even on. These aren't even counted in the government deficit. And these are the things that are really, really scary because something has to give. So in, in all of this, the, the single factor that's, that's kind of driving most of the scariness is Medicare in particular, and not just Medicare, but it's it's not just the demographic changes, but specific to Medicare, it's the increased costs of of healthcare. So if somehow that nut can be cracked, if healthcare can all of a sudden grow maybe just with inflation or maybe even slightly faster than inflation, but not at the rate it's growing right now, then you could to a large degree mitigate kind of the scariness of, of what's going on with our with our obligations.